Welcome back. Um, we'll continue from where we left off. So you're looking at uh, how the Holy Spirit, um, you know, he's the creator. We see that he is not only the creator, but he's also the creative being. And, uh, and he imparts that creativity. You know, he teaches. Like when we say the Holy Spirit is a teacher, uh, this is also something that he teaches. He gives the ability to create right to others and he did so and that is what we see in the old testament right so what he did in the old testament times he is ready willing to do it in our day and time as well okay so let's look at um, um yeah so we, we were looking at um, numbers 11 and we see that uh, the people uh, the elders who were there they also received the work of the Holy Spirit and which we saw that it is actually the whole uh, ability to lead okay L ability that a leader needs um, maybe it is to have the vision it is to give direction is it, it it is maybe wisdom to you know choose between what is right and wrong discernment to choose between what is right and all that. Uh, the Lord ensured that the 70 elders also received and then they could carry that burden of responsibility. Okay, so, so we see that happening. So, so it's, it's very encouraging for us. Okay, maybe some of us are thinking, okay, maybe you're running a, I don't know, uh, maybe you're running a business, maybe you're uh, running, a, you know, you, you're leading a ministry, maybe you're a pastor. Um, you know, some of us here, it could be that, or, you know, maybe you're, you're heading a small group, right? Maybe a, a small Bible study, uh, a fellowship, maybe you're, you know, you're called to lead that, you're a sp spiritual leader. Now, sometimes you feel that, hey, this burden is so heavy. You know, I feel that it's, uh, you know, everything comes upon me. Everybody's asking me what to do. Everybody's, you know, looking to me for direction and, and uh, you know, what should we do next? Uh, and it seems to be so heavy, right? So we can be encouraged because the Holy Spirit who did this during the time of Moses, he can do the same thing for us today. You know, even as we pray and ask, Lord, this leadership ability, God, give it to some of the others in the team. Right? Same vision, same kind of passion, same kind of wisdom and ability, Lord, you just give as you choose, Lord. Some of these leaders, you know, some of these elders who are there, and the Lord will carry that, you know, or do that for us so that, you know, we can do our ministry, we can enjoy, you know, doing the work of the Lord. And uh, there'll be others who will come alongside and carry that responsibility, weight of responsibility along with us. Okay. Okay. Um, so we see several other things. Uh, also, we see Numbers 27, 18. We read about Joshua. Uh, that is interesting. Let's let's go there. Right? Um, see, there are several other scriptures which are mentioned there. And uh, I'm just skipping that. But uh, these, since these are there in the notes, I uh, just want to encourage us to read through. Right? Uh, maybe after the class or you know, before next class, you can read through that. Okay? Um, and we'll get an understanding of what all the other things that uh, the Holy Spirit did. Okay, so we're looking at um, Numbers 27 and verse 18. Okay, the Lord is giving some instruction to Moses again. Okay, now Numbers 27, verse 18. Okay, the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay your hand on him. Set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and inaugurate him in their sight. Verse 23. Okay, you go down to verse 23. And he laid his hands on him and inaugurated him just as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Okay, so verse 22 also says, Moses did as the Lord commanded. And Elias, uh, he took Joshua and set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation. So the Lord is asking Moses to do something, you know. There is Mo Joshua who's being trained under Moses, 
who's been helping Moses, um, and uh, he's seen everything uh, the, throughout the journey. So the Lord gives Moses specific instruction. Take Joshua, you lay hands on him, and I'm going to do something, right? Say, set him before the people, inaugurate him as the leader. So Moses does that. Okay. Now let's turn to uh, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Okay, uh, Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Okay, Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Now, Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Okay. So it says, Joseph, Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, so that the children of Israel heeded him. So what happened there? There was something that the Lord did for Joshua, even as Moses obeyed the Lord. Okay. The same, same thing that he did with the elders, he did something like that here. So the leadership mantle that was upon Moses now was upon Joshua. And it says here, and the children of Israel heeded him, meaning they obeyed him, they listened to him, even as Joshua led. Okay, so we see that that the whole mantle of leadership, the Holy Spirit, you know, transfers onto Joshua. Okay, so we we read that we read that right, and we see that in the Old Testament, you know, we're going to see the difference between how the Lord worked in the Old Testament and how He did in the New Testament. Um, how he does in the New Testament. So we're going to look at, study that difference. But we see that when we go through the book of Judges, we see that the Holy Spirit comes upon a person. Okay, He comes upon a person for a particular assignment, for that lifetime of that person. And what is that assignment to lead the people? You no, know, there was no leader. They were what we call as judges. And these were the people who were leading. These were the leaders who were leading the people, the, the children of Israel. So these were the judges. So the Holy Spirit would come upon these judges and uh, uh, during their lifetime, and they would lead the people of Israel. Right. So we see, um, let's say, let's look at Judges 3 and verse 9. Okay, so we are moving on, going to uh, Judges chapter 3. And then verse 9, then the, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel, who delivered them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. Verse 10, the spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. Okay, so what did the, what did the Lord do? The spirit of the Lord came upon this person, and he judged what does judge mean? What does it mean to judge? Is it a good thing to judge or is it a bad thing? What do you think? Online students, is it good to judge or bad to judge? We have a book called Judges. It's a bad. And all they did was judging. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Yes, okay. <laughs> so Pankaj says it's a bad thing to judge. Then what were all these judges doing? <laughs> right? So, you know, you look at uh, Judges 3 and verse 10, you look at that. The Spirit of the Lord came upon who? Othniel. And it says, and he judged Israel. Okay. So judging is to discern, is to impart wisdom. Okay. To judge is to actually choose between two options or many options and say, okay, this is good judgment. Okay, this is what I'm judging. This is what I'm choosing. Okay. So all of us, we judge every day. Okay. Like you you eat something and you and you you come to the conclusion, hey, this is tasty. I want some more. Right? You eat some food or you drink something and you say, this is nice. I think I so you what are you making? You're making a judgment. You what is a judgment? You're saying, okay, is this suitable? Is this good? Is this bad? Or maybe you taste something and you don't like it so much and you're saying, okay, I'm not going to eat that. 
you made a judgment right so all of us judge you know when we go on the streets on the road when you are going and we see a signal and we judge hey is it green or red right and if it's red and if you go past the signal you will be fine there could be some accident so it's a bad judgment right you're supposed to stand stop at the signal but you did not so it's a bad judgment it is green and you're supposed to go you go it's a good judgment you judge correctly so judging is good judging is necessary and we judge every day right but the thing is i think what pankaj is referring to is uh, you know the, the lord says you know don't judge before it's time okay so you judge something before it's time you judge something in order to condemn it right you judge something with a set of maybe baby values that are not right then that is bad judgment right so the lord says you uh, don't judge before it's time so it's in the it's in the context of um, maybe you know uh, judging too hastily or even judging with the with the view of just condemning you know writing off rejecting okay? so uh, so all of us judge so those so these judges were leading people and the holy spirit was giving them the ability to judge so so again the whole thing of leadership wisdom for leading you know maybe uh, i don't know how many of us have you know lead people right right now maybe we some of us are not and then we're thinking okay you know what is the big thing you know in leading people right what is the big thing in leading a nation what is the big thing in you know i you know everybody does it i'm sure it's it is difficult there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of expectation right and uh, certain certain choices or certain decisions that you make will have far reaching consequences right so it's a lot of pressure a lot of expectation and uh, you need to judge right a lot of wisdom is required a lot of discernment so the holy spirit came upon these judges so that they could judge righteously so that they could lead the people right so that is what we see othniel the lord came upon him the holy spirit came upon him and he judged israel okay so then we read about um gideon in um, chapter 6 judges chapter 6 and verse 34 it says but the spirit of the lord came upon gideon then he blew the trumpet and the abiezrites gathered behind him so here if you read you know the verses prior to that what is gideon doing gideon is threshing wheat okay and he's doing it under cover because the people called the midianites come invade they they take away they plunder basically they destroy the crops they take away whatever livestock and everything is there they take it from the israelites and they go they steal plunder okay and so for fear that whatever crop he is you know pressing they will come and take it he's doing it under cover he's doing it in a wine press that's where he is threshing the wheat so the angel comes to him and he says arise o man of valor you mighty man so gideon's response is you have the wrong address you come to the wrong place you come to the wrong man i'm not that right i come this is my background this is my family background you've come to the wrong place the the angel says the lord is with you you mighty man of valor okay but see the whole thing changes when the spirit of the lord comes upon gideon then he blew the trumpet and the people gathered around him and he goes and uh, you know he he goes on his assignment right and the lord says so gideon says lord if you will save israel by the hand as you have said then he goes on to you know we we know that story of the fleece right he puts out a fleece in order to test and check uh, you know with god you know is it really you who spoken and so on but the thing is that the spirit of the lord comes upon gideon and he goes about to fulfill the assignment okay so for that assignment of leading for that assignment he had to you know lead the people in conquests okay so maybe in today's time it is how we need to maybe fulfill or achieve certain things 
maybe plan and execute certain things, right? So the Holy Spirit comes upon and he empowers, gives the ability to do that. So Holy Spirit does that, right? So we see that in the life of Gideon. And so also, you know, uh, like Samson and so on. So we, in Samson's case, it was supernatural strength and, uh, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Okay, so let's go to uh, uh, let's go to First and Second Samuel, right? Let's look at First Samuel chapter three and verse one. Okay, we are moving on quickly. First Samuel chapter three and uh, verse one. Okay, now it says here, the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. Let's go on to um, verse 19. So Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the Word of the Lord. So something is happening here um, that Samuel is established as a prophet. Who is a prophet? You know, prophet so and so. Samuel is a prophet. Prophet Isaiah. Who is a prophet? Okay. Prophet is someone who conveys a message from God. Okay. One who tells about the future, okay? Prophet, Hindi, God, Bhavishyavani, right? Bhavishyata, huh? Okay. Prophet. So, a prophet is simply a person who hears from God and proclaims or declares it to the people, who hears from God and does that. You know, obeys, carries out what needs to be done, right? So here it says there, then the Lord uh, was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. In the sense, there was a fulfillment of whatever words or whatever instructions uh, or something that he prophesied, Samuel prophesied. Okay? So prophecy comes by the Spirit of the Lord and it is not just the man or, or not because of man's ability. Okay. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 9. Okay. Uh, 1 Samuel 9 and verse 9 says, When a man went, form in Israel, when a man went to inquire of the Lord, he spoke thus, Come, let us go to the seer, for he who is now called a prophet was formerly called a seer. So when people wanted to inquire okay, of God, now, God, the Holy Spirit would come upon people and enable them to do certain things, right? In the, in the, in the case of judges, he, he, he would come upon and they would judge, they would lead, they would lead into some, you know, conquests and so on, right? So here we see that when people wanted to hear from God, they would go to a prophet and it says here that there was, it was formerly called a seer, Seer is a person who sees, right? Sees, he has a revelation of what God is showing. And that's it, right? So here, people would go to a prophet, people would go to a seer, and the prophet would prophesy by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, they would say, this is what the Lord is saying. This is what the Lord wants to do. This is what the Lord is saying to you in your situation. And it is by the Spirit of the Lord, meaning the Spirit of the Lord gives the ability to the prophet to hear. The Spirit of the Lord gives the message to share uh, or the instruction to carry out, and the prophet does that. Okay, so Spirit of the Lord comes upon Samuel. Okay, so we, let's see uh, another uh, scripture, First Samuel chapter 10. So we are in um, chapter 9. Let's move on to uh, chapter 10. Okay, chapter 10. And was, um, yeah, somebody, okay, yeah, you have a question, Julie? 
Um, I see that your hand is raised. So do you have a question? You can type it out. OK. Um, in bad connection, maybe. Um, she just dropped out of the call. OK, fine. So um, we'll look at chapter 10 and verse, um, verse, verse 5 onwards. OK, let's just read chapter 10, verse 5. And this is what Samuel is saying. OK, after you have come to the hill of God, where the Philistine garrison is, and it will happen when you come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them. And they will be prophesying. So we see during this time, prophets, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon the prophets as he did upon the judges. And during their lifetime, during their life assignment, he would give the instruction, he would give the messages, and the prophets would prophesy or proclaim, share that message or carry out that instruction. Okay, So here, um, Samuel is saying that you will meet a group of prophet, prophets coming down from a high place and they are also carrying some music instruments and they will be prophesying. Look at verse 6. Now, Samuel is having a conversation with Saul, King Saul, and this is what he's saying, right? He's telling King Saul, then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Right? The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be turned into another man. Okay. And then we go on to verse 10. Then they came to the hill. There was a group of prophets to meet him. Then the Spirit of, the, Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. Now, a couple of things to note here. Yeah. Now, Samuel, he prophesied by the Spirit of the Lord. He was saying, this was what will happen to Saul, King Saul. Right? He said, Saul, you will go there and you will see these, this group of prophets coming down and they will be carrying some instruments. You know, you see all the information that God has given Samuel. Right? You will see this group, they will come down, they will be carrying these instruments and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of God, then the Holy Spirit will fill you, will come upon you, and you will also prophesy along with them. Okay. And then we read verse 10, we see that that is how it was. When it came to the hill, there was a group of prophets to meet. The Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. So we see uh, Prophet Samuel talking about this giving this information something about the future that's going to happen and it and it happened so right the lord uh, people testify uh, that the lord did not allow the words of samuel to fall to the ground so which means that it came to pass it was a complete it was fulfilled okay so we see the prophecy fulfilled here and as um, saul in saul's life he was filled or his holy spirit came upon him and he prophesied Okay. He spoke uh, or he declared um, the, the words of the Lord. Okay. Let's look at one more scripture. Okay. So what do we understand from this? The Spirit of the Lord causes people to prophesy. Yes or no? That's a simple conclusion. So if the Spirit of the Lord caused Sam or enabled Samuel to prophesy, enabled King Saul to prophesy, who was in no way you know, uh, called a prophet or anything, but if the Spirit of the Lord can do that, can he do that today? Yes. Right. So prophecy is for today. The Spirit of the Lord can enable ordinary people to prophesy. It could be information about the future. It could be something that the Lord freshly wants to bring to these people. So the Holy Spirit can do that even today. Now that's something that we understand. So, so we've been looking at a, you know uh, quite a few things that the Spirit of God does: creation, creativity. Right and uh, you know leadership, judgment, uh, judging, discernment, and here we see spiritual gifts like or spiritual activity like prophesying. Same Holy Spirit, right? You see, He moves in so much, you know, diversity and so different ways He functions. All that we see as we go through the Old Testament. Okay, okay. Then um, let's look at uh, David. David's life, 
right? Second Samuel 23 and verse 2. In Second Samuel chapter 23 and verse 2. Now these are the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Jesse, thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. He says in verse 2, the spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. Okay, So we know King David. We know about the psalms he wrote, about the songs that he wrote, the, about the instruments that he, you know, the tabernacle that he set up, the, the whole worship that he set up. We learned all that about King David. So it says here that David is testifying, he's saying, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, okay? which is again prophesying, prophesying, right? And his word was on my tongue. Okay? So the Spirit of the Lord enabled him to write those songs, enabled him to declare those songs and declare whatever prophetic utterance that um, that is there in the Psalms. Who did it? The Spirit of the Lord. Okay, so we might be thinking, okay, uh, you know, can I can I release some song psalms or songs, right? Uh, and I, I I feel that I have this ability, and yes, the Holy Spirit can enable us to do that, right? As He did in the psalmist's life, uh, the Spirit of the Lord. He's saying, that I spoke by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, um, so here. Uh, Let's let's look at Second Samuel seven and verses one to seventeen. So you know, David says this towards the end of his life. Let's look at Second Samuel seven, where um, and verses one to seventeen, right? Um, okay, this is uh, King Nathan. I'm sorry, Prophet Nathan, and uh, he he goes to the king, and uh, he says. Um, he prophesies to him. Verse 3, we say, we, we see 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 3. Okay. Then Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Okay. Verse 4, And it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day. But I have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Whatever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel and, and so on. So verse 8. Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel and so on, and then, and then he says um, in verse verse verses um, fifteen sixteen um, he's prophesying, and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever, according to all these words and according to all this vision. So Nathan spoke to David. So Nathan, the prophet. So he received prophetic utterance about David, about what David has to do, what, and about how the Lord had brought him from being a shepherd to be a leader of people, right? And he says here, if you see verse 17, and according to all this vision, which means that Nathan, he received this prophetic utterance in a vision. And who gave that? The Lord gave. The Holy Spirit caused him to, you know, uh, receive that and uh, declare them. The Lord uses uh, Nathan to also reveal some information that none, nobody knew, or David tried to hide about his sin, right? His sin of adultery. We read that in Second Samuel chapter twelve, right? Second Samuel twelve, verses one to fourteen, and Nathan has this conversation. He meets with David and he confronts. The sin that he did, the, uh, and the Lord, it says here, verse 12, sorry, chapter 12, verse 1, then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and begins to um, give the prophecy. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so Charles uh, says, can you touch a little on the group of people who say prof prophecy is not for today, and then they all ended in the book of, uh, and they all ended in the book of Acts. Okay, so um, yeah, so we're going to study about prophecy as one of the gifts of the Spirit. So the thing is, no. Brother, your mic is on mute, brother. Oh, sorry. How long has it been muted? Since the question started. For? Qu for? Since when, the, uh, when you read the question, brother, of Charles. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, I think I accidentally touched that. So, sorry about that. Okay, so so we see. Uh, oh, I see how. So we see that Paul is uh, writing to the Corinthian church and is giving them instruction how the gift should be actually used, uh, and so on. So we know that. Okay. Even in the Corinthian church, uh, the gifts were there. So, so nowhere do we see these um, gifts um, uh, stopping or uh, running out. Right? The same Holy Spirit was leading them. So, yeah. So anyway, we, we will study in detail about these gifts. So I think Andrew has a question. Andrew and Anusha. Yeah, you can go ahead and probably type out your question, please, or ask them. Andrew. No questions are here. Mic was in yours, so that's why I raised the hand. Oh, okay. You're just pointing out the mic. Was... Okay, fine, fine. Got it. Right. Okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we see that. Um, yeah, I, I hope that helps, Charles. Um, right. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Elijah, right? First Kings 18. And verse 12. So, um, so when we, as we go through this, um, through these books, as we just go through the Old Testament, we see, uh, and, you know, we see the work of the Spirit here and there, and we see that the varied ways in which the Holy Spirit is working, ministering, functioning. Okay. So we see all that. Um, so let's look at one one Kings chapter eighteen, and uh, yeah, we're reading verse twelve. So this is uh, this is the conversation between Elijah and uh, and and this person by name Obadiah. Okay, so Elijah meets with Obadiah and he has this conversation. Okay, so let's let's see. Uh, Maybe let's look at verse 7. Now, as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him. And he recognized him and fell on his face and said, Is that you, my lord, Elijah? And then Elijah says, It is I. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. So he said, How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill? Now, we know that uh, you know uh, Ahab was a ruler. He was a pretty... You know, not a righteous ruler. So he and the Jezebel uh, massacred the prophets of the Lord and so on. So Obadiah is a person who has actually taken some prophets and it protected them, 
says in the verses before that he had taken about 100 prophets and hidden them, uh, 50 in a cave and so on, and fed them. So, right? so he knows that Ahab is not a, is not a good man. He's not a good ruler. Okay, so, so here Elijah is saying, go tell your master or go tell uh, your, uh, Ahab that Elijah is here. So he's very troubled, Obadiah is troubled, and he says, have I sinned? That you're delivering your servant into the hand of Ahab. Now look at this. You know, as the Lord, I'm looking at verse 10, right? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. When they say he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom that they would, they would uh, nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here. Now, verse 12 is very interesting. It says, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I'm gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place that I do not know. Okay, so it means that Obadiah, it was a common occurrence in those days. Right? He was aware of this, that the Spirit of the Lord could do this to the people of God or you know, to the prophets. Right? It says here, verse 12, it came to pass, as soon as I gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. And when I go and tell Ahab, and he cannot find you, he will kill me. For I, but I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. So we see that some supernatural works of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So he's saying the Holy Spirit will take you away physically from a place, and people cannot find you, Ahab cannot find you, and therefore... He'll be angry and, you know, it'll be like me giving him wrong, uh, wrong information and I will, be, uh, I will be put to death. Okay, so that is something that we see. Now we see a parallel to this in, um, in the book of Acts, right? When we read about uh, in chapter 8 and we read about Philip, what happens is Philip is, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to look at the book of Acts, uh, you know, verse by, uh, you know, a lot of verses. Um, but we see that Philip in the book of Acts is actually giving water baptism to the Ethiopian official, the Ethiopian eunuch. So when the Ethiopian official comes out of the water, Philip is not there. Right? Philip is not there. Physically, in that place, he is not found. And it says the Spirit of the Lord actually took him. So the Holy Spirit is all-powerful, and if he so chooses in his plan and, plan and will and purpose, he can actually do this, that he is God. He is a God, supernatural God, miraculous God, and he did it in... Uh, it, so it's, it seems to be a common thing there. So Obadiah says, the Holy Spirit will do that, the Spirit of God will do that, and then I'll be in trouble. And we see in the book of Acts that same thing, the Spirit of God actually takes Philip away from that, that place where he baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch. So just for us to know that the Holy Spirit does things that go beyond our understanding, right? that go beyond our, you know, our, our learning of this is how the natural laws operate. Holy Spirit is well able to do the miraculous, right? So he is God. He is well able to do the miraculous. Now, it's like saying, okay, everybody's sitting in class. And suddenly I say, okay, everyone, let's bow our heads and pray. You all close your eyes. And when you open your eyes, I'm not there. <laughs> it's as, you know, it, it's like that, as supernatural as that. It's, it's not a natural thing. For a person to just disappear like that, it's going to take some time. I have to go there, you know, go up the stairs and go. And by then, I'm sure many people will open their eyes and see because it's taking some time or it's, it's going to, you know, I've made some noise and, and all that. But then we see that what we understand is God, the Holy Spirit, is above the natural laws. Okay? Above, because he's the creator. Right? He is the God who does the miraculous and the supernatural okay so the for them they had an understanding of it they acknowledged it and say yeah god you are able to do that 
and some of them experienced it like Philip and so on. Okay, okay. Let's. Um, you can go through some of these uh, scriptures, and um, yeah, let's let's go on to. Uh, you can read about Elisha also, how Elisha was filled with the Spirit and so on. Uh, I'm going on to uh, you know First Chronicles chapter twelve. Okay, First Chronicles chapter twelve. Okay, so First Chronicles twelve and verse seventeen. Okay, verses seventeen and eighteen. Um. Okay, so it says here. Then David went out to meet them. Now it's talking about the sons of Benjamin and Judah who came to meet uh, David. And this is actually like uh, David's army is growing and people have come to meet David in order to give him their support, right? So David went out to meet them and answered and said to them, if you have come peaceably to me to help me, my heart will be united with you. But if to betray me to my enemies, since there is no wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look and bring judgment. Then the Spirit of God came upon Amasai, chief of the captains, and he said, We are yours, O David. We are on your side, O son of Jesse. Peace, peace to you, and peace to your helpers, for our God helps you. So David received them and made them captain of the troop, captains of the troop. Okay. So we see something here. What is it? That the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon these mighty warriors and he's bringing them, gathering them and uniting them under the leadership of David. Now something like what he would he did in Joshua, uh, something similar, right? For a purpose, for an assignment, um, he's, he's actually there. In, in, it was actually giving that leadership ability to others. Here, the Lord is gathering those leaders to work under this king or king-to-be, David, uh, for a particular purpose. Okay, So what is he doing? He's, he's actually brought them. So it says here, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Amasai, and Amasai gives his allegiance to David, and he says, we are yours. We are on your side. We are here to, you know, to, to be with you, for our God helps you. Okay, so so what do we learn from this? There's something to be learned here, right? That the Spirit of God can actually gather, unite people, put maybe, you know, the vision that God has given, put that in their hearts as well, and gather them for a particular purpose. Okay. Now, David was, you know, looking for people who can come and help and so on. But here... We see that people are coming and saying, you know, we are with you. We are with you for this particular cause. We will fight alongside you. Okay. So we see that. Okay. Then what else um, do we see? We, we move on to chapter 28. Okay. We look, look at chapter 28 and verse 12. Okay. Um, Maybe let's um, let's read a few verses earlier. Okay, let's read from verse ten. Okay, First Chronicles chapter twenty-eight, verse ten. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and and do it. Okay, who's saying these words? David to Solomon. Okay, and then verse eleven. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the vestibule, its houses, its treasuries its upper chambers, its inner chambers, and the place of the mercy seat. Okay. And the plans for all that he had by the spirit of the courts of the house of the Lord, of all the chambers around, treasuries of the house of God, and so on, and, and goes on to great detail. Right. So the plans for the building of the temple was given to David. Now he's passing on to Solomon. And he's saying the plans he had by the Spirit. Okay, so David did not, David, you know, we must understand he was a shepherd boy who sang well and wrote some nice songs that was again by the 
spirit of the lord by the spirit of the lord which means the holy spirit helped him empowered him to uh, write that okay um okay i uh, we're almost there okay i just need to plug in my charger just give me a minute please excuse me Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we see here that uh, this entire design for the temple which Solomon built. Now, looking at David, we know that he was a shepherd. He didn't go to any, you know, uh, architectural, you know, a college of architecture or anything like that. But it says here that he got the design for the temple by the Holy Spirit. And why not, right? The whole same Holy Spirit who could give the intricate design for the art, for the you know, for the artisans or for the workmanship of creating jewelry and fabric and so on. The same Holy Spirit is giving David the design for the temple. Okay. Now we know that you know, just before building something, there is a blueprint, right? The architects will be carrying a blueprint, will be carrying. Uh, so what does the blueprint have? It's a plan. It's a plan. Where do the windows go? Where does the door go? How many windows in this particular place? How wide should it be? How long should it be? What, you know, uh, and probably later, you know, you decide, okay, this should be the color of the wall. This should be, you know, the, this is how the, how many, you know, electrical points should be there and so on. So the same kind of design God has given David by the Spirit. Okay. Which means he just got a download, a divine download in his spirit. And he's now telling his son, you know, this is what, this is how the design should be. And, uh, and the Holy Spirit gave me this. Okay. So let's stop here. So we understand that the Holy Spirit is God. Okay. Holy Spirit is God. He is capable and He is able to do so many wonderful things. And this is what He did in the lives of these people. Right? And this is the same God whom we worship now. He's not changed. His way of working has changed, which we will study, but He is the same God. Right? So when we know that Holy Spirit is a person, and he is more than willing to talk to us, to spend time with us, and he desires that we spend time with him. And when we understand the Holy Spirit moves in amazing, wonderful ways, and he gives ability, gives uh, the, the special ideas and creativity, you know, we can actually, we have access to him. So we can go, spend time, receive from him. Right. So that's the beautiful thing. That's a beautiful privilege that we have as people of God, right? Okay, so we will stop here, and then we'll continue in the next class. So what you can do is, uh, you know, when we meet next week, we can go through the rest of the notes, and uh, that will be helpful. You know, we can move a little quicker, right? Okay, thank you, online students. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah. God bless thank you, you very much, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you.